The Toyota Land Cruiser 78, commonly known as the Troopy or Troop Carrier. This is my review. Now, I'm going to do my very best now to be unbiased, even though it's mine. I've just paid for it. But the reason why I have to do an unbiased review and why it's important that you know that it is going to be unbiased is that while I have chosen this vehicle for myself, it has emptied my bank account by 75,000 Australian dollars. That's close to 55 US dollars. What am I getting for my money? The Land Cruiser 70 series consists of three models. This is 79, which is a long wheelbase pickup in both single cab and double cab. There's the 78, which is the middle wheelbase, which is the troop carrier, and the 76, which is the wagon, which has even a shorter wheelbase than this. These vehicles are actually made in quite small numbers, not much more than 100,000 a year, which is getting very close to the attrition level. When a vehicle is made in quantities less than 100,000 a year, it becomes, becomes uneconomical to build. And that's one of the reasons why these vehicles are quite expensive. But if I look at the vehicle's equipment, what I get for my money, I get a bit ticked off. So right now, part of me is in love with my new truck and part of me is smarting at the fact that I've spent so much money for what is really a van. The ride is not great. It's typical leaf spring at the back. It's very firm. It's designed for a hard life. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the reason why the Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series still has old-fashioned cart springs is because, well, it's good for sales. And you might think that that's a bit, I mean, how would an uncomfortable suspension be good for sales? Remember, this vehicle is loved by agriculture mining NGOs. The drivers of those vehicles, they're generally not very skilled. They will drive the vehicle as fast as they possibly can until it gets so uncomfortable and then they'll pull back. Land Rover introduced a coil spring suspension in 1984 that was fantastic. It was unbelievably good. It still is. The Defender has a brilliant suspension system. It's too comfortable. And what the vehicles were used for, they were, they were used in very rough conditions by unskilled drivers who would drive too fast because it was too comfortable. And they lost huge sales because of it. That is why this relatively uncomfortable suspension it remains on the 70 series Land Cruisers. And thankfully, there are lots of options where I can sort out that problem. Yes, I've got to go back into my pocket, take out some money to do it, but I can actually make the ride of this vehicle spectacularly good. Wheel rims. Steel. Airbags. I get two. All right. Seats. Now I'm pleased to say that the 2017 model Land Cruiser GLX spec, and I, that's the upper, high as you can go spec with the 70 series Land Cruisers, have seats that are, I would say, okay. But that's good because before this model they were adequate. And that's the trouble with this vehicle. Like every vehicle on the planet, they're designed to a point by accountants. And these vehicles being so popular with mining and ag agriculture, NGOs, etc., they equip them very basically. So this velour, it's not velour, it's a very plain brushed nylon fabric, is as good as you're going to get. Better than it used to be? Yes. Better comfort? Mm, a bit. The audio system. CD player. Nothing wrong with that, a little bit old-fashioned. This particular unit has been around for about five years. The speakers. How can I put this? 
My lawnmower has a better audio system. There is the, I think it's about a three inch speaker. There's no backing to it, so there's no speaker box. So the sound that comes out of that sounds like a squirrel that's just been run over. And that's the base. Back seat passenger. Well, leg room is really, it's spacious back here, particularly headspace. But I don't quite understand the GLX model, which has the bench seat. The troop carrier, it's called a troop carrier because traditionally it has two long sideways facing bench seats in the back and can carry 12 people. Here, five in total. What is the advantage over the 76 wagon then? With the, It must be the enormous boot because the disadvantage, of course, is this vehicle only has two front doors. Next is the carpet, this absolutely plush, not cut pile carpet. But I mean, look at this now. If I separate it from the back, it's that's the sum total of the vehicle's sound insulation. I... The dashboard, <clears throat> as plain as it is, was released in about 2008 and a vast improvement on its predecessor. Ventilation is good. Controls are simple. Typical Toyota, good solid materials made in its construction, nice switching and this one even has cruise control. It still, however, has the heater vent controls from the 1970s. I don't mind that too much, but um, okay, I, w I won't say any more about that. I'll live with it. It doesn't worry me. It's just extremely old fashioned. This is the engine and this is where the good stuff starts. I have owned a troop carrier before. It had the 1HZ engine in it and I operated it in Africa. This one, the V8 4.5 turbo diesel, is the only v uh, engine available in Australia. Is it better than the 1HZ? Well, of course it's better. If. Now, here's the big if. It's wonderfully powerful. It's smooth. It's noisier than I thought it was going to be. It's a bit, no it's a bit quieter than the 1HZ but it's not a particularly quiet engine. It has marginally better economy, but not a lot better. You would think it would have a lot better being such a modern common rail, whereas the 1HZ is, a, is an old stovetop type engine. It's a very, that 1HZ is a very basic engine. So I'm getting a lot of new technology, better performance, but would I choose an H, a 1HZ or the V8? And that's, I think, you see, the thing is that this motor being very modern is very sensitive. In fact, Toyota give you, when you buy it, a leaflet warning you that if certain signals come up on the dashboard saying that there is fuel contamination, stop, exclamation mark. Very sensitive engine. If there is contamination, particularly water, it will damage the injectors. The 1HZ, you could run it off chip oil. Or you, you could, it is an unbreakable engine as long as you maintained it. It was half a million kilometers easy pie. I don't know if this is the same. I am intimidated by this engine. If I open a, a 1HZ bonnet and I look around and I think to myself, well, I know what that is, I know what that is, I know what that is, but we need to change that, I know what that is, I know what that is. I don't have a problem with it. I know the, I know it. About three years ago, I suffered fuel contamination and it was an easy roadside repair. But what we did to keep the vehicle running, because it got worse and worse and worse, we bought a couple of those and we just took the pipes off the, the, the standard filter and put this in line. Not anymore. Okay. This, I look at it and think, ha 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 well that's the fuel filter. Um, But it, it's beautiful. It goes so nicely with this vehicle. It's, it really is. It's, it's beautiful to drive. This specification troop carrier has disc brakes all round. It has two 90 litre fuel tanks. And if I look underneath it, it's 
beautifully built under here. The Land Cruiser 70 Series is a unique animal in that it is a favorite amongst non-governmental organizations, mines, agriculture, in every country that they are sold because of what's under here. They are built so strongly. They are over-engineered. They are re-engineered with every model. Every time they bring a new model out, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit stronger. That's why I love this truck, is because it is so dependable, so strong. And the mines love them because they, they do things that other vehicles just cannot do. And I'm not talking about traction and off-road, even load carrying. The fact that they last in these terrible environments, they keep running day after day, year after year. I like that. As an overland truck, my money's well spent. This gorgeous bonnet is only sold in Australia. They have increased the airflow into the engine and increased its efficiency. I don't care about that. I think it looks fantastic. I love it. So that's the gorgeous bit. And this is the old-fashioned bit. And this is the very old bit. Because this piece from here to here was developed in 1985. They haven't changed it. They've only changed the front. And they changed the front to fit this engine, the V8 engine. They needed to make the front wider to fit the engine. So they redesigned it. I think it's fantastic. But there's one thing they forgot about. And this is not so fantastic. Well, they could hardly have forgotten to do it. They just didn't do it. They didn't widen the back axle. They didn't invest in the vehicle sufficiently to get it absolutely right. So now the front wheels, and this is a problem particularly in sand, as they drive through sand, they compress it and around the edges of the tires, it creates little ridges, doesn't it? The back tires being narrower, ride in those ridges. The trouble is that they can't decide which ridge to ride in. So it rides in the left, then the right, then the right, then the left, and and so you're driving along and the vehicle wants to steer itself. It's a big problem. To me, I believe that it's one of the, it's a deal breaker for many people because to correct it is quite expensive. It's not acceptable, Toyota. And as much as I love this truck and I can get over the carpets and I can get over with so much of this truck because it's actually great in so many ways. That one thing, <clears throat> that, that actually steams me a bit. And I oh, will just fork out the extra few thousand dollars to sort it out. I shouldn't need to. For me, personally, owning this vehicle, as much as I do, I'm a little squeamish at the money I spent on it. If you're gonna own one of these vehicles anywhere in the world, you wanna own one in Australia because the, the accessories available for these vehicles, these Land Cruiser 70 series, it's extraordinary in this country. And in some countries like, like South Africa, the troop carrier is no longer sold. So this is the last place in the world where I can get anything I want for a 78 troop carrier. I'm lucky to be here and I'm lucky to have such an amazing truck to build. To me, it's a blank canvas. So in the weeks and months ahead, you are gonna see a total transformation of this vehicle. And those of you that know my channel will know that I built a troop carrier some years ago, it was a green one, and it was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Well, let me tell you this. This vehicle is gonna give a new meaning to the word awesome.